It's been a great week already for the Foxes with a Rolls Royce of a performance in the first half on Tuesday. And then hearing at the full time whistle that promotion rival Southampton's long unbeaten run was over. But the Saints last night and Leeds today have won again. Leicester will be hoping to reopen that 14 point gap to third place here against Middlesbrough, who've dropped into the bottom half of the table and need to get things moving again, or their playoff hopes could be extinguished in the next few weeks. Full house inside the ground, as always. Michael Carrick, the manager of Middlesbrough, just putting his coat on. It's a mild afternoon in Leicestershire. Two teams completing their handshakes. In terms of the team news, it's a measure of how many striking options Leicester have. But Jamie Vardy, four goals in four games, is rested to the bench for this one. Passon Dacker, three goals in his last two starts, but an unused sub on Tuesday against Sheffield Wednesday replaces him. That's the only change from that 2-0 win. Tom Cannon is on the bench, but the Foxes' fourth striker, Kalechi Iheanacho, back from the Africa Cup of Nations, must wait for his return to the match day 20. Well, Middlesbrough are low in confidence after four games without a win and low in players as well with Johnny Housen and Hayden Hackney, the latest added to a long injury list. Manager Michael Carrick makes five changes from the defeat at Preston in midweek. Paddy McNair comes in. Leicester City's Luke Thomas, who's on loan with Borough, is ineligible. Recalls for Engel, Barlasser, Silveira and O'Brien. Without a natural number nine, Matt and I will have a look at how they're going to line up, but uh, they have a lot of attacking midfielders. Just as interesting to see whether they might try and cause problems Leicester that way. Full start as the kick was played backwards, but Leicester players were taking the knee at the time. Quite rightly, the referee blew his whistle. No room for racism as... Middlesbrough get us underway, kicking from left to right for those of you listening to our audio coverage. And the ball is knocked forward to Silveira, who's the furthest man forward at the moment. Looks like he's occupying that uh, false nine or even maybe the out-and-out -out nine position for Middlesbrough. We know the number nine today for Leicester City is Patson Dacker, as Leicester have the ball at the moment, just outside their penalty area, patiently building... It was a fast start, wasn't it, on Tuesday night against Sheffield Wednesday, but it's a, a different beast they're up against today as it's played over the top looking for Mavadidi, who was just strayed into an offside position. Oh, just smirking to myself there that Silvera's given the game away that he's a, a false number nine. He hasn't played up there too often. He didn't even know when to take the kickoff. <laughs> Ten <laughs> seconds too early. Yes, yeah, Silvera's a, a signing that they made uh, from... Australian football during the summer. I, th I think I'm correct in the uh, the game up at Middlesbrough where they did sort of disturb and unsettle Leicester a little bit in the middle of the park, which meant they weren't able to get the, the rhythm going until later in the game when, ironically, Middlesbrough scored against a run of play. Flicked in towards Pratt, right-hand side of the penalty area, good defending, the ball goes behind for... A corner to Leicester City, the first of the afternoon. Pratt just bursting from midfield there, but the angle wasn't great for him. It was a lovely little ball by Ricardo, just flicked it over the top. And uh, coming across was the big centre-half, Rav van der Berg. Yeah, it's encouraging a couple of times, Dennis Pratt. In it goes, and it should have been a goal, but it was Vestergaard who just didn't hit the target from, well, barely two, three yards out. And it's gone behind for a goal kick. Well, what a great opportunity that was for Leicester City. The ball was flung in from the right-hand side and Vestergaard arriving, headed it down, but wider the target. Well, just speaking about the benefits of, of Pratt making those surging runs in behind the Middlesbrough back four. Still without a, a recognised centre forward and that sometimes can cause problems for teams. Not quite knowing who to mark, whether you have anybody to mark. Certainly seen Manchester City managed by Enzo Maresca's mentor, who have 
delivered a few trophies, haven't they, without a, a recognised number nine. Not until Mr Harland arrived. Here's Mavadidi, a touch and a go. Off he goes again. Steph Mavadidi plays it into the penalty area. And it was Ricardo who didn't get good connection on it. Fatawu digs it into the area. Oh, the header's wide by Daka, but it hasn't gone behind. It was that bad, the header, but it actually went across the six-yard box and then Fatawu with a volley and it goes out for a throw-in. <laughs> what a messy passage of play that was, Matt. Well, it was a mixture, wasn't it? There was some very precise passing involved and then <laughs> it was all a bit scrambled, wasn't it? But the order of the day is heading practice at the moment, isn't it, unfortunately? Albeit only two opportunities, but both of them golden, you have to say. Then Dakar's... Uh, the ball's come over, it's avoided all the Middlesbrough defenders. And he, he's only about four yards out there and he's done well to miss. Ref allows play to go on as Ricardo has it. Pays it out to the side to Fatawu, running menacingly at Engels and gets a shot and takes a deflection behind for a corner. Matt Clark was stretching the defender. And Glover was going the other way in the middle for a goal, and had that been on target, then Leicester may just have gone ahead. Yeah, as he cut in there, Fataru looked pretty dynamic, didn't he, and purposeful. Forced the shot a little bit, he was slightly off balance. And then... Mavadidi goes through the centre, Paddy McNair there was just a yard ahead of him, and was able to unload the ball. Here they go again, though, over on the far side, Middlesbrough have it, and the flag has not gone up, it's McGree, plays it in, Azaz! Middles for a lead. Finazaz gets his second goal in a week. What a terrific counter attack, you have to say, from the visitors. They've come here and been positive. And the underdogs lead by a goal to nil. They broke over on the far side. And Finazaz got himself inside the penalty area. And there weren't too many blue shirts around. And he just dinked it over the goalkeeper. His biggest worry was whether it was going to go over the crossbar. But there was an offside appeal, but the replay here shows it definitely onside. And the ball was played in, and it was a good finish by Zaz. Game on here at the King Power. Wings got bypassed, all of a sudden it was Ricardo, 2v1. But they do pass forward exceptionally quickly, don't they? And here they are Ryan again. McGree. And the chance, it is 2-0. Silveira scored. Incredible scenes here, the King Power. Unprecedented scoreline. Leicester City trailing at home in the first half by two goals to nil. Sammy Silveira burst into the penalty area and blasted it past Hermanson. And Middlesbrough's fans over on the far side cannot quite believe what they've seen here, and nor can the Leicester fans. Well, I was just about to praise Ricardo for his wonderful defending. The timing of the challenge was crucial to prevent Leicester going 2-0 down. But then, just out of nowhere again, I mean, you can't say Leicester haven't been warned, but I think it was a throw, wasn't it, on the left-hand side, and a little bit loose with control, and Middlesbrough picked the ball up. Middlesbrough have executed extremely well on, on a couple of occasions, you have to say, and it hasn't been the case from every team that's visited here. Fatua, right-hand side, plays it in, looking for Mavadidi, but it's a good header. Out for a corner, quickly taken as well. Middlesbrough not fully set here. James Justin back to Mavadidi, but it wasn't delivered into the area quickly from a Leicester point of view, but they have it. Recycling possession and Mavadidi in his left-wing position, Dewsbury Hall plays it in, and he'll come to Fatawu, onto the left foot, thought about a shot, thinks again about the shot, and this one fizzes over the crossbar, but certainly off the top of my head, it almost feels like one of the first shots that we've yep. seen from Leicester this afternoon. Well, Fatawu had one that was a bit of a tamer effort than that strike that, that hit Clark, didn't it? It went for a corner. The two headers, Vestergaard and Dakar, can they get one of these headers right? Vestergaard is there. Dakar as well. Desperate for a, another opportunity. Fars bobbing about on the penalty spot. 
In comes the corner, keeper comes, doesn't make it, and the ball just sits on the six-yard box, and Fars is only able to kick it away from goal. Winks in towards the penalty area, looking for Vestergaard. It's played away, and the shot will come in from Dewsbury Hall, which takes a deflection and goes behind for another corner to Leicester City. Determined, stubborn defending from Middlesbrough. They've got something to really hold on to, haven't they, putting their bodies on the line. A needs-must situation, a, a change for Leicester, trailing by two goals to nil. Your thoughts on that substitution, Matt? It looks like Cannon's going as a straight replacement for Mavadidi, but unorthodox, really, but I think Cannon's pretty versatile. They've only, only seen him in that central role. Here comes Pratt, right-hand side. He's got support from Fatawu. Instead, he plays it in towards Cannon. Dakar's there as well, and Chewsbury Hall once more. Recycled again, this is Winks. Leicester, wow, it's going to be an interesting 45 minutes, to put it mildly. As fast plays it into the area, one or two games this year have been done and dusted by half-time, the way Leicester have played, but this is something different for the supporters, and you feel that they will respond noise-wise, and it's going to be intriguing to see whether they can dig this one out and win what would be, from this position, one of the wins of their season. Fatawu with the ball into the penalty area, looking for Cannon back post, and it's towards Dewsbury Hall, and this is Winks. Winks again, interesting that two crosses already have gone out to Cannon over on that far side, as Winks threads it into the penalty area. Ball didn't quite break for James Justin, and Cannon has it once more. Positive start this by Leicester, it has to be for the full 45, you feel, but they will have to be wary of the counter-attack. One more, and that could be it. So they can't get the kitchen sink out just yet. This is Faz. Fatua. And Pratt with the ball into the area. And it's cleared away by Middlesbrough. Fist across the six-yard line. It was inviting, but no Leicester player could get his head on it. And listen to the noise inside the King Power. Faz going forward and winning the free kick, does he? No, the ref says play on. Fatua onto the left foot. Thought about shooting momentarily. Out to James Justin, Cannon, long sleeve shirt on, the substitute, gets a 1-2, plays it into the six-yard box, and Clark gets it away for Middlesbrough. <laughs> Throw in to Leicester over on that far side, quickly taken. Leicester kicking from left to right. And I think most of the action is going to be in that half, in that final third, hopefully from a Leicester point of view, as Fatou again tries to run at the defender angle and does chips it towards the back post cannon was there but it just went over his head and justin plays a good ball in and it's only as far as fast with the left footed shot ricochets inside the penalty area this is fatawu onto his left foot close to the touch line just feeds it into the penalty area fast has it for leicester city dominating possession at the start of this second half good ball in again and once more Cannon is the target but this one drifts behind for a goal kick but a really encouraging start to this second half yeah, very much so guys it's really positive from Leicester from the off and a sign of intent it's going to be much needed I feel in, in this second 45 and as Matt Elliott is saying they cannot take too many risks just yet because Middlesbrough still feel there's another goal in it for them Vestergaard 10-15 yards short of the penalty area goes out to that far side Cannon really is holding that that wing position at the moment in towards Winks with the shot and the block sees the ball go behind for a corner Winks waves his arms up in the air as if to say come on get behind us this is a big afternoon for Leicester City yeah, trying all avenues aren't they Going out wide through the middle <laughs> and the, the outside and the channels crosses into the box Winks with this corner, it's a deep one towards the back post and Fars just recycles it across the six-yard line and the ball will not fall for a Leicester player and it dribbles through to the goalkeeper. James Justin was in there but it just didn't sit up for anyone to smack it into the back of the net and Glover was relieved that he could just drop on it after it came off one of his own defenders. Yeah, they know that the game 
the scoreline plays into their hands because Leicester are going to have to gamble, they are going to leave gaps at the back and Middlesbrough hungry to exploit them, they have a free kick and there's four players who could take this one it's about 25 yards from goal and it's just gone wide of the post well it was uh, McGree who took it we'll give Hermanson the benefit of the doubt that he knew it was going wide but I tell you what it would have been a struggle at that being just inside the post for him but once again you're getting a sense that there's a degree of jeopardy out there now for Leicester City as they chase are they chasing two goals are they chasing three goals I think they believe they can still win this game so they've got to create some good clear-cut opportunities as the ball goes out to the far side Barley is inside the penalty area Cannon gets into an opportunity to shoot but there wasn't really any power on that shot and it was easy for Glover who's got to be careful now as he's on a yellow card yeah just the first signs that things are becoming a little bit rush quickness there's so much time for Leicester as the ball is whipped in and headed to the edge of the penalty area this is Harry Winks Eunice is available on this near side and takes the ball now onto that left foot just thinks it towards the edge of the penalty area but most of the blue shirts were further away at the back post Leicester have it again Ricardo feeds it infield Pratt unopposed at the moment and thinks it forward looking for the run but it's easily picked off by Middlesbrough who look threatening again as they come through the centre and it's Silveira with the chip and uh, over the crossfire it goes well he's high on confidence at the moment the Australian having scored that goal well, he's getting an earful from McGree <laughs> who was up alongside him in support but as you say the game that he's having Silveira more frustrating from Carrick's point of view that they are where they are but uh, perhaps the tables turn for them a little bit now or the tide has turned because they must be boosted with this this performance today McAteer Ricardo threaded into the area Pratt with a ball in cleared away Pratt once more they want a handball penalty against Clark they're not going to get it Big shout from the supporters, although you have to say there weren't many players out on the pitch in blue who were claiming it was a penalty. Vestergaard for Leicester City going through the centre, but he loses out and Milford try and counter attack again. It just worked the ball so well and <laughs> bounced it off the referee here. And the ball actually ricocheted to a Milford player on the far side, but the ref had blown his whistle. And a slight embarrassment for Chris Kavanagh always is, isn't it? Yeah, this was the penalty that. claim. Okay, just so referees can see uh, referee's fault for getting in the way there. But yeah, we've seen a replay there. It bounces. No, it's not handball. You create a bit of momentum, and the players running inside, and the ball's played outside or vice versa. Eunice. This is McAteer plays it into the six-yard box. Vardy was arriving, but he just couldn't dink it. He just needed a touch where he felt he had to lift it, I think. And in the end, it went behind for a goal kick, but Middlesbrough opened up, and that hasn't happened often this afternoon. McAteer down the right-hand side, and Vardy was going in, and somehow it went over the crossbar mat. I'm well, just trying to work out how <laughs> Jamie Vardy ordinarily does not miss opportunities like that. But... Corner right-hand side, it's taken quickly into the six-yard box, and just doesn't break for a blue shirt and Middlesbrough will come away I think that we've seen things today that we haven't seen all season we've seen about four or five of them Leicester going 2-0 down in the first half we've seen players play well below their level we've seen Jamie Vardy miss from about two yards out and hook it over the crossbar it's been an extraordinary afternoon is there more drama to come as the fans will hope so McAteer, right-hand side. Movement ahead of him from Pratt. Plays it into the six-yard box. Oh, Vardy was hoping to get a tap in there, but it was brilliant defending. You have to say from the big centre-half, Van der Berg. Yeah. Not for the first time. Van der Berg, Clark, right across that defensive line. Swirling wind at the King Paris. The corner is taken. It's towards the near post by Eunice. 
And Pratt picks it up for Leicester City. Big scoreboard behind the goal, showing the action. Says 2-0 to Middlesbrough, it says 83 minutes and 17 seconds. Leicester looking to load the ball into the penalty area. Not yet, though, Ricardo. Pratt. Now to this right-hand side to Makatera, plays it into the six-yard box, it comes for Cannon with a shot. They want a penalty against the defender that looks as if it would be harsh, really tight to it, and Cannon is in the action again! Oh, it's gone over the crossbar! And that just sums up the whole afternoon as Makatera doesn't hit the target after Vardy, even closer, didn't hit the target. And you feel now this is just going to be one of those strange old afternoons for Leicester City. Alternative role for him, but uh, it looks like he's played there before. Vardy, Vardy, through. Through, Vardy through the centre. He's one on one with the goalkeeper. Vardy scores! They're still in this one. At last, Vardy gets the ball out of the back of the net. No time to celebrate. He's at the halfway line now, putting the ball down. A long ball over the top. Vardy's pace got away from the defender and he smashed it into the back of the net. 2 1. Wow. <laughs> they will be in for a surprise. I mean, it, it hasn't looked like Leicester's day from quite early on, in truth. The Middlesbrough have been sharp, been at it. All Brighton plays it into the penalty area and the header will come in. And it's recycled by Vardy onto the penalty spot. Middlesbrough get it away, but no real distance on it. All Brighton once more. Everybody's on their feet. All Brighton into the penalty area. And the header goes wide, well, well wide of the target from Yannick Vestergaard, who, let us not forget, had perhaps the moment of the afternoon, the moment perhaps when the game changed. A header early on from Vestergaard at the other end of the ground and he converted from a few yards out still a long way from goal Yunus Faz 40 50 yards from goal all Brighton here comes the delivery into the penalty area headed away James Justin goes and claims over on that far side it's gonna be a throw into the home team but this is it surely the four minutes are up now the referee's looking at his watch. The ball's played into the area, and the keeper claims it, Tom Glover. And that's it. Full-time whistle blown. The rarest of things, Leicester City have been beaten. And Middlesbrough, even rarer of things, have completed the double over the runaway leaders in the championship. Michael Carrick shuffled his team beset by injuries, he put out a formation that has come up with the goods